We love watching animations because we fall in love with those characters. Those characters make us laugh, cry, and cheer for them. I remember from movie Up, Carl Fredrickson was returning home from his wife's funeral. And every time I look at the scene, it makes me cry. I remember in Ratatouille, Remy was making his masterpiece Ratatouille to impress toughest food critic Ego. And I was so nervous and anxious and cheering for Remy. These moments are so memorable to us because they touch our hearts and connect it to us emotionally. But that didn't happen by accident. It was because artists, designers, and engineers behind the screen working tirelessly, crafting the scene to communicate emotion. We say, our hero is crying, the scene should be crying too. But how can we make the scene cry? That's where I come in. I worked as a lighting technical director at Pixar Animation Studios for years, working on these films, practicing visual storytelling techniques to heighten the emotion of the story. One important factor in these techniques is composition. Composition means how an image is organized. So placement and arrangement of those visual elements can emphasize a certain part of an image and draw the audience's attention to it. And also, composition can create an image feeling uncomfortable or comfortable. Let's look at Goya's painting. What is our main focus here? The man in the white shirt? He is our focal point. He draws our attention. And also, you might say, this looks very dramatic and intense. As opposed to Goya's painting, Renoir's painting makes us feel relaxing and comfortable, just like Sunday afternoon. When I was working on Ratatouille, one of my very first shots was to light Remy in the spice rack. And my objective was to ensure we read Remy's action. But at first, Remy was blue, Remy's blue, and all those spice jars next to him were shiny and had a bluish tint to them because there's a windows, window right next to the spice rack, so we're getting all these sky bounds on them. So Remy's blue and spice jars are blue. I couldn't really see his action. So we had to minimize those distraction to separate Remy from those jars. So I toned down the blue on those jars and I toned down the ref, um, those shininess, and I added some warmth tone to those jars. And now Remy's our focal point. He gets our attention. Another important factor in these uh, visual storytelling technique is camera. Camera determines what will be in the scene and what will not be in the scene. And camera framing means how much of a character will be shown. We use close-up to show the facial expression, and we use full shot to expose the action. Camera angle help telling the story and heighten the emotion of the scene. This is low angle, which means physically we place the camera lower than the character, and that makes our character look threatening and powerful. High angle means we practically, physically place the camera higher than our subject. And this little boy looks so innocent and vulnerable. Another one, another important, very important uh, role in visual storytelling technique is color. And color is made out of three properties, hue, saturation, and value. And hue means what color it is, like a yellow or red or blue. Saturation means how brilliant the color is. And lack of saturation is gonna make the color gray. And value means how dark or how bright the color is. And using these three properties, we can create any colors in the world. 
And by mixing separate colors together, we can create high key image or low key image. High key image, just like this, means predominantly bright and less of a contrast and um, uh, less of a shadows. And we use a high key image to make an image dreamy and cozy and comfortable. Low key image means predominantly darker and higher contrast and more shadows. We use a low key image to intensify the drama. Not only applying these concepts to each scene, we also apply to the whole entire film. Most films have story arc, and it starts with the first act that introduces characters, environment, conflict. And in second act, the conflict rises, and we reach climax. And in third act, we come to resolution. So story has its arc, and it has ups and downs, and the color follows those ups and downs and arc with it. Let's take a look at Toy Story 3 for an example. We start the movie in Andy's room, and he's wearing blue, his wallpaper is blue. We're telling the audience, blue means home and safe. And we introduce our antagonist, Lazzo. And what's his color? Opposite of safe and blue, safe blue, he's pink. And then Buzz find this mysterious vending machine. We're not sure if it is good or bad. So we used green, something in between that. And then Lazzo comes to power, conflict arises, and he brings more red with him. And then Woody comes to rescue. And what color does he bring? Blue. And literally, in this moment, Woody is saying, let's go home. But that didn't work out. <laughs> so they ended up in incinerator, about to get burned. And this is our climactic moment. So we preserve that red up to this moment. And we're going full saturation in this to intensify the drama and climactic moment and then they escape, and they're back home to our safe color blue. Animation is a perfect medium to blend art and science. And also, animation doesn't just tell the story, but it tells the story of the characters, how they go through their journey. In this journey, our heroes sometimes fall and sometimes win. When they're winning, the scene will be winning too. And most of all, that would make our audience to keep that moment to their hearts. Thank you.